Let's be the name of your help. Lord Rabbi, Yah, for being our Father, our Abba. And I ask you to forgive me, forgive us for our sins, our transgressions, and our iniquity. Please give us the strength and the will and heart to forgive all those who have sinned against us. And I ask that you may be merciful when you judge us, your people. And I ask as we go into this lesson, that you may open up our hearts, cause us to understand. Please bless us with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word. And I ask that you may give us endurance. And I ask that we will seek you with the whole heart. And I ask that none of us will be slack or grow lazy in this walk. But I ask that we will be diligent, righteous men and women before your face. And I ask that you may strengthen our physical bodies and also strengthen our spirit, our ruach. For many of us lost many battles against the flesh, against sin. But I ask that you may have mercy upon us. Also, we lost in many battles. I ask that you may please give us the strength so that we may win the war, the war against good and evil. And I ask that we may overcome the evil with the good. And I ask that in the end, we are worthy to, do, to dwell with you in righteousness and love, without sickness, without death, without fear, without pain, without hatred. I ask that you may please fill us with your word and ask that we may use your word as a defense. And I ask that those who are sick, I ask that they may be healed. Those who are recovering from surgery, I ask that you may heal them in due season. And those who are in a state of mourning due to the loss of a loved one, I ask that you may give them shalom, give them comfort, give them peace. Those who may lack understanding, please bless them with their portion in due season. And I've asked that we would never put any man or woman or anything in this life or any amount of money in your place, but I ask that we will serve you for you are the most high. There is no power. There is no mighty one above you. Please keep idolatry far from us. And I ask that you may keep us on that straight and narrow path, which leads to salvation, which leads to everlasting life. For Tehillim or Psalms 130 reads, out of the depths I have cried to you, O Yah. O Yah, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my prayers. O Yah, if you should watch crookedness, O Yah, who would stand? But with you, there is forgiveness that you might be feared. I look to Yah, my being has looked. And as for his word, I have waited. My being looks to Yah more than those watching for morning, watching for morning. O Yisrael, or Israel, wait for Yah. For with Yah, there is loving commitment. And with him, there is much redemption. He shall redeem Israel from all his crookedness. I ask that you may redeem us from all our sins, our crookedness. For in you, there is forgiveness and there is much redemption. I ask that we all may be forgiven. And I ask that in due season, we can be presented to you as righteous men and women before your face. And I ask that you may walk with us to the end as we seek your face, as we seek everlasting life. And I ask that you, that you may accept this prayer, this tefla, if it be in your will. Bless you are, Yahweh. Bless is your name, Yahweh. And blessed is he who comes in the name of Yahweh. Amen, amen. So, so be it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Shabbat shalom again, my, my family. Praise that everything been well for you all this week. And the most high bless you and keep you, protect you through the week. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So I'm going to open the floor for any uh, praise report. The floor is now open for any praise report. All right, Don Mikael, you have the floor. I saw the light, I saw the light, no more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy that I have my sight, praise Yahuwah, I saw the light. I saw the light, I saw the light, no more 
darkness no more night. Now I'm so happy that I have my sight. Praise Yahuwah, I saw the light. I saw the light. I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy that I have my sight. Praise Yahuwah, I saw the light, I saw the light, I saw the light. No more darkness, no more night. Now I'm so happy that I have my sight. Praise Yahuwah, I saw the light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, all praise, honor, and esteem be unto the Most High. I just want to thank him for keeping me this week. I want to thank him for my email who wasn't feeling good. Um, I think it was a couple of days this past week who's feeling a lot better. I just want to thank him for moving by his Ruach in the behalf of his people throughout the four corners of the earth and all the great things that he's doing in the midst of us. And I just want to say hallelujah. Abba Yah, thank you so much for causing me to see the light. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I yield. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I like this song, I love this song. See the light. I'll turn the floor to you, eat my order. Shabbat shalom. As always, I too want to give up all praise and honor and all esteem for how he continues to bless and protect us, keep us safe from hurt, harm, and danger. And, you know, a lot of times we take so much for granted. We think it's just a small thing that he has kept us and that we're here again on this Shabbat. But I lost two uh, two people who I know passed this, this week or what have you. And it's a blessing to still be here. Um, the other thing is I was shopping this week. And as I was shopping, I noticed they were playing the Christmas carols and what have you. And people saying happy Thanksgiving and all. And I thought about it. You know, it's like, you know, I've got to be more patient, have more compassion. And I can't get upset with people because a lot of times people don't know. And I thought back to a time when I was doing the same thing because I didn't know. So... Um, I'm, I'm just so glad it was placed in my spirit to, to show a little more compassion and be a little more patient with people who haven't come into the knowledge of the feast days and what have you. So I just give y'all all on and all praise that we're here uh, coming into another Shabbat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Turn the floor to you, Ima. testimony. Yes, they did already. Putting up the Christmas decorations, even around my little area. But I, I ain't gonna go into too much in that because I'll be having some thoughts, but I'm gonna leave that alone. Yeah, in the most I heal me from my thoughts. All right, Akuta Ayala, you have the flow. Shabbat Shalom, Mishpaka. Um, I wanna give all praise. I wanna say thank you um to the most high yah. Um a few months back. I uh, had an issue with my oldest, my firstborn son, um, and I wasn't sure about his mental state and he wasn't doing too well. Um, and then um, he went away. I knew he was supposed to enlist into the National Guard um, and that's all I know he did. So three months have gone by uh, pretty much since I was able to talk to him. Um, and just know how he was doing after the last time I talked to him with, his, with him not sounding so well. Um, and so I was able, I was contacted by him uh, earlier in the week, last week, and I was invited to his graduation. Um, and so I traveled with um, Yahusha and Sapphire and my oldest brother to Columbus, Georgia to watch him graduate um, from his training uh, of being a National Guard in the U.S. Army. Um, and I just want to give the Most High all praise and all esteem 
for restoring that piece of my shalom. Um, he looks good. <laughs> he looks really good. Um, I can see the growth in him, the maturity in him. And I'm just so thankful that I was given that opportunity because I prayed to just allow me to see him and just know and touch him and know that everything was okay with him. And I'm, I'm happy to say everything is okay with him. And I just look forward to see what else happens with him. So I thank y'all for that and sure enough traveling mercies because that was a long ride. So all praise to the father and I yield. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. We're going to keep your vent in our prayers. Um, one thing here is going to learn the military instruction organization, but also you're going to, they're going to break them down and uh, build them the way how they want to build them up. So we're going to keep on this prayer because it's, it's a lot, you know, just pray that he don't have to, you know, take all them vaccines. They'd be trying to have you take, you know, um, I know my time and someone who was in the military took both. I know as I can, y'all probably contested this. Uh, they, we took so many vaccines and they did so much stuff. So I just pray for him that he had peace of mind. And uh, when he do decide to get, get out, that he don't go through some of what uh, our veterans are going through now. Um, hallelujah. Uh, Akuta Azaria, you have the floor. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Mishpaka. Hello, yeah, I'm so happy to be on Shabbat this week. I'm just thanking the Father for his goodness and his mercy because his mercy endures forever. I just want to give him all thanks, all praise, all esteem because he is worthy to be praised. And I just want to just say this one thing, um, you know, as just reading and doing my studies in my personal time, I'm just really just zooming in on how merciful the most I is, how good he is to us. And half the time we don't even deserve all that mercy. So we as people, I hope we really, really look into ourselves and realize some of the things that we do that cause things on ourselves. But you know, just to emphasize, Yah is merciful and his mercy truly, truly endures forever. Halal Yah. And I yield. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, something came to mind, you know, the season is, man. And, uh, and this is for my family and whoever might listen to the recording. Um, things, whatever we go through, the most I might give us in our trials and tribulations, that it might seem bad. And, um, but I'm tell you, I, I put this on the most high word that, you know, we just continue staying faithful and obedient to our heavenly father. Things will get better. Um, and, you know, and from life, family, it won't, it's going to get better. You know, just keep faith in the most high. And I'll tell you, you know, um, I've been through my trials and tribulations and sometimes I still go through it, but, uh, praise y'all that, you know, I still he stand fast on his word that I know I'll be all right. And I, I turn it for you, Shasha Moore, and then uh, Akuta and where I leave, Miss Waleen, you'll be the last one for our turn to Maury. Most of us would give all praise to the most high for life, strength, health, for all that he, that he has done for me, all that he's done for us. And I just want to share what the most high uh, showed me um, before I got on this study. So I was reading um, 1 Samuel chapter 12, you know, or 4 Samuel uh, chapter 12. And um, I was I read I was meditating on verse uh, was it seven and eight. So I'm going to read it, and it says, "So Nathan said to David, that we the heart the man thus said, Yah, of Israel, I anointed you king 
over Israel. And I delivered it out of the hand of Saul. And I gave thy master's house and thy master's wife into thy bosom. Sleek, 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 uh, uh, Sha, you going real low. Uh, is you on the headphones? No, I'm actually on my laptop today. Okay, because like you like you fall from the mic. Okay, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to start over. Yeah, so I was meditating on the verse 7 and verse 8. And it, and it reads, And they then said to Dawid, or David, Thou art the man, that saith Yah Elohim of Israel. I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. So I was thinking about, because um, most of us know the story, um, you know, Milk Dawid or King David, you know, he was righteous, then he had his his faults, you know, with adultery and murder. And then when Most High was speaking to the prophet, he basically told him, you know, he gave him all these things, you know, power, you know, the kingdoms, he delivered them from his enemy, his enemies, and he gave him, you know, his wives, his family, and he even told him if it had been too little, he would give him more. It made me think about, you know, how much the Most High, you know, cares for his people. You know, he gives his people things, and then that, the last part of that verse, when it say, if it had been too little, you know, as if anything the Most High does is little, you know, but um, if it had been little in his eyes, he would have given more. And it made me think about the scripture in uh, Metatayahu or Matthew chapter 6, where it talks about, seek ye first the kingdom of the Most High, and all these things shall be added unto you. So I thought about, you know, when, when it comes to serving the Most High, you know, he will bless you with all that you have need of, you know, so it's like, it's like, what do we need sin for? What do we need wickedness for? You know, sometimes it's hard for the human brain to process that. But when I think about it like that, it just doesn't make sense. You know, we serve the most high, someone who loves us, someone who cares for us. He blesses us. So it's like, what else do we need? You know, so I just want to give all praise to the most high for putting that on my lab or my heart. You know, let his name be extinct. I yield. Hallelujah. 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 And Kuta Wali, you have the floor. Shalom, family. Um, this week I have just been listening to Tremaine Hawkins sing that song, What Shall I Do? And uh it had really touched my heart. I am not gonna sing it for y'all tonight because I want to spare y'all ears. <laughs> for this one until I get to know it a little bit better. But I do want to let you know that even as I was, you know, even though I was pondering and, and, and asking Yah to direct me this week, a scripture came from my, to my mind from Exodus 14 and 13, where it says, and Moses said unto the people, fear not, Stand still and see the salvation of Yah, and you shall know, and he, sh and he will show you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall not see them again, no more and forever. So I just want to thank Yah for putting that uh, scripture in my heart this week, because there's some things that I have seen this over the last couple of months. And um, I just believe that Yah is speaking to my heart to stand still. There's times that I feel like I can't stand. There's been times that I just felt like I just want to just go in a corner and ball up like a fetus. And But, but Yah saying to me to stand still and see the salvation. Sometimes we have to, sometimes he will allow us to see him make a way for us. And in uh, Psalms 91, he said, because I have known his name, he's gonna set me on high. And I'm just so excited because I, even in the midst of all of this, when I should be, I don't even know what to say. All I know is I'm not. 
All I know is that I'm resting in Yah tonight, and I'm so glad I made it to this Shabbat with you all. And I am just so excited to see what Yah is going to do with my situation, with my family. And I'm I'm just excited. I'm excited also to tell you that I um I hadn't heard from my son. And I want to I want to thank Yah for how he's healing families and relationships because I hadn't heard from my son for like about 3 years. He he um he got upset over something and I don't we don't even know what it is today where we tried to talk about it. But I thank Yah for restoring that relationship. He calls me every day since since we went to Shakot. He's been calling me every day. And um he's a he's a musician. He plays the piano. He can play the guitar. And um he's been trying to play. I, I've been trying to learn that song, What Shall I Do? And he was tickled because he has to uh help me to stay on my key. And um, I'm just elated to to what Yah is doing in my life. And I, I just want y'all to pray my strength in Yah that I will forever stand and see what he, and, and just stand. I just want to stand. I yield. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I want you to continue working on that song and tomorrow, you know, you can you can sing that song to us tomorrow because it go, you know, after the class tonight, you might want to want to practice some, you know, and, and bring it out tomorrow. Bring it out. We would love to hear the song. All right, Mr. Ka. Uh before I turn to Morris and Mock, um, you know, we've been last couple of we've been going over the, the history of the Hanukkah, piece of dedication, going over the Maccabees. So uh we'll continue going into that that into the Maccabees, and I'll turn it over to you, Morris Shabbat. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All praise on esteem be to the Most High, Yah. Uh, Shabbat Shalom, Mishpachah, Shabbat Shalom. Remember the Sabbath day too, keep it set apart to keep it holy. All praise on esteem be to the Most High. All right, Mishpachah, we have a lot of reading to do tonight, so I'm going to try to jump right in. Um, Shashma, uh, if you would help Kanaka out, um, if you would get for me Matthews 5 and 17, Kanaka, I already have ready for me uh, 2 Maccabees chapter 2. Um, so we're going to be starting off with uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 17 with Shashma, Kanaka, I want you to have ready Maccabees, 2 Maccabees um, chapter 2. All right. All right, so this is Meditayuhu, commonly called Matthew chapter 5, starting at verse 17. Again, this is Meditayuhu, commonly called Matthew chapter 5, starting at verse 17. And it reads Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the Torah or of the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, so heaven and earth pass one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law to all be fulfilled. Verse 19. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. So I just want to go ahead because these are the words of uh, the Mashiach, uh, the Messiah. And he's already uh, coming on the scene. He's beginning his ministry. And he's letting people know that because I'm here, don't think that I come to do away with anything you've already heard. Don't think I've come to do away with the law of the prophets. That is the word that is written. That is still the word that still stands. So don't think my coming has changed any of that. So he's telling you, lo, Allah, do not even think it, do not even have that come into your mind. So these are his words. And so um, in, in communities today, churches, religious uh, uh, platforms today, um, there is a teaching, again, that the laws are done away with. And 
They use it to say that because the Messiah came and they run heavily to Paul's writings, which they misunderstand. And therefore, we have a doctrine that has been created by the adversary but through man that's been given to us. But if we are saying that we followers of the Mashiach, who was a Hebrew himself, he said himself, do not think. So if the man himself said, don't think that I came to do away with it, then why is there a teaching that it's done away with? Right. So he said, do not think that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but the fulfill of the complete. For truly, I say till heaven and earth pass one jot or one tittle shall no wise pass from. Whosoever shall break the least one of these commands and teaches men so shall be called least in the reign of the kingdom of heaven. So he's already telling you that anyone is teaching anyone to break the commandments. Anyone is telling you to break the least of them. Such you've heard people say, well, it don't matter what you eat. That's a small thing. God ain't really judging based upon what you eat. Yahusha himself have said, whosoever teaches people to break the least of them shall actually be least in the kingdom. And that's even if they get in, there's other scriptures at a later date that we'll discuss that shows that if you're not keeping these things, uh, you really ain't getting in anyway, right? So he said, don't even think that I come to do away with it. And whosoever shall teach me and show, then they should be called uh, least in the kingdom. Um, and whosoever breaks the teachers, he says, uh, uh, but whosoever does them and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So now he's also coming to hear him himself have said, anyone who does them and teach them shall be great in the kingdom. These are the words of the Messiah. So the reason why there's a lot of people have an issue with receiving the New Testament is not necessarily the New Testament itself. And it's not really the Messiah himself. It is the false teachings and the false doctrines that the Mashiach whom we believe, uh, a man who did live that walked in the flesh amongst men, he was still teaching and keeping the very things that we still believe we should uh, teach and keep. But the church or the doctrines or the religions have started teaching something contrary to his very own words. He himself, if the laws were going to be done away with, he would have said so when he was on the earth. He himself would have also said, you don't have to keep a Sabbath anymore. But he himself kept the Sabbath. As you read in the New Testament, it tells you, as his custom was, he went in the synagogue on the Sabbath day therefore to read so it was his custom to go to the synagogue on the sabbath to read it was his custom to keep the more even the feast days we see where he would kept passovers with his disciples and things like that and nowhere written that says that he ever told them these things are going to cease and they're done away with he never said it it's not recorded because he didn't say it so religion is teaching these things so i know sometimes i may be sounding like a broken record because i'm always speaking to um, uh, this doctrine of the law is done away, but whenever we've been conditioned to think a certain way, it has been years and years and years of this conditioning to have us think this way. So if it's been years of years of conditioning and programming for one to think this way, we have to continually hear while we're purging and washing and bathing and trying to circumcise our hearts, which is our minds, from the filth that we've been given, we have to continually get an understanding of what we're reading and we have to continually discuss these things to help us purge ourselves of the falsehood all right so i just want to go ahead and start here to show that this is what he said all right so if he was the one that everyone says they follow regardless of what you think paul said regardless of what you think paul said he didn't say it and so we people call themselves followers of messiah but they're strongly in the twisted, misunderstood writings of Paul, and so they're creating doctrines that Paul didn't even say. So I just want to establish that before going in, that uh, Yahusha, uh, uh, Yehoshua, uh, Yeshua, whichever dialect one is more familiar with, he himself said that uh, he did not come to do away with these things, don't you even think that, and anyone that breaks and teaches others to break them shall be the least, but he who teaches them and keeps them shall be great in the kingdom of the of the most high right so i just want to start there because these are his words and so i also want to give just a little bit of history right so um the word tells you to study to show yourself approved and um much study at some point will make a weariness of the flesh because there are the making of a whole bunch of books there's a whole bunch of debates we now have the world wide web and being on this world wide web you can find a lot of information but you can also find a lot of stuff to entangle you and to confuse you so there's always going to be different opinions. There's always going to be different views on what people say. 
because sometimes people are trying to support their stance to their view. I have a thing that the most I gave me, I just want to try to teach things clean. And so sometimes when there are differing views, I share both and let you be able to hear and at least know that I'm not just trying to get you to hear it from my perspective, but I also want to share with you what's out there. And then I will tell you what it is that I believe and what, why I believe what I believe versus those who will tell you something and guide you to information to only support what they want you to believe to lead you away from what is truth. Okay. So a lot of you may not be familiar with the Apocrypha, which we'll be going to next. And the Apocrypha is uh, the writer. So I'm just giving a little bit of historical or just a little bit of Bible study, not just studying the Bible, but a little bit of Bible study. In the 1611 King James Version Bible, there were books that were in the 1611 version of the Bible that is not in what's commonly considered the Christian or Protestant canon, which has 66 books. So if you start going into some research and things like that, you're going to find that even in the Roman Catholic, uh, the Roman Catholic Bible, they have seven more books than what the 66 canon is. And um, and, and those seven books that are, that are there are some of the books that we read here in the Apocrypha, which the Maccabees is one of them. OK, so even in the Roman Catholic Bible, there's still these writings recorded therein. All right. There are some Bibles that have been translated from times of old that has 83 books in them. All right. So now through the process of time, different generations of men saying what is the word of the most high? What isn't what should make the cut? What shouldn't we now have what's now the 66 books, which is called the 60, the 66 canon, which only has the 66 books. So along the way, people have been subtracting things of recordings of information. That's historical information that was recorded aforetime for our learning. So you can go and you can read the debates uh, on the differences. So there's also what we call the Septuagint, uh, the Septuagint, right? That was the Greek recording, and it was actually translated from the Hebrew Torah because they wanted the, 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 the Torah translated into the Greek so that they can understand it. So the Septuagint is actually a Greek recording of the Hebrew Torah. And along with that came the prophets and other things that's now in the Septuagint. And um, the latest recording of some of these would have been like 130 BC. So that's a very, very long, ancient time ago. So what they would tell you, if you start to read and look at different scholars, they're going to tell you there was also debates of which canon or which version they would use. So the Roman Catholic Church said they was going to subscribe more to the Septuagint, which did have the Apocrypha in it. And there was some that subscribed to that and some that said they wasn't going to subscribe to those writings. So to let you know that even today, there's nothing new under the sun. There's always going to be different views. But what I would say is that while going through this, that we listen to the information, we listen to what's already said in some of the books that we are all familiar with, and then we see why we think some of the stuff is actually removed or why someone is trying to make you believe that it never existed or shouldn't exist in the Bible when the actual first King James Version Bible, 1611, had these books written therein. Okay, so with that being said, let me get my screen share, y'all. Give me a moment. Let me turn this light off. It's super hot. Yo, give me one moment. Screen share. Where are you at? Sorry, Johanna. Can you see my screen, Adon? If you can, tell me what you see. I see your screen, Adon. All right. Hold on. All right, so we're going to continue on with our reading. I just want to uh, establish some of those. And what we're going to start doing on some of these nights is we're going to go into a little more history sometime than just um, than just reading the scripts. And the reason for doing so is because, as I was discussing with uh, Zakane earlier, um, and, and I've been discussing with uh, some for a while, and I've made mention of it at the Knesset before, there's going to come a time when you're going to need the Ruach to really get an understanding from the Most High, for the Most High to give you confirmation in your spirit what it is that you feel the most high is saying. Not that I'm saying that we all supposed to have all these different thoughts because it should only be one thought process. What I am saying is when you have people presenting different arguments, different views and things like that while using the same material, there will come a time when you have to say, most high, please show me your way, all right? So I just want to go on record stating that because, and when you start to read, and if, you know, my saying that I normally use, use common sense for the nonsense, I believe a lot of times it would just come clear to you just in your own reading comprehension skills and understand that you will see why some of this stuff comes crystal clear. All right. So uh, before we read this uh, in Second Maccabees, 
Uh, we covered last week, we finally made it to the celebration of Hanukkah and what it actually represents. It does not represent a Jewish Christmas. This is not a, a time for giving gifts. And that's what Hanukkah was about. Hanukkah was not the festival of lights and just about the miraculous oil that was being burnt. Hanukkah came into being as a day of dedication. Again, Hanukkah means dedication. And it's a, it has to do with the ded rededication of the temple because there was a time period when wicked Israelites sided with wicked nations. The wicked nation came in, took over and made us profane the sanctuary, or uh, profane the altar, made us eat pork, stop circumcising the children, uncircumcise your heart. You couldn't keep the laws and people were being put to death for actually keeping the laws of the Most High. So by design, they came in to actually cause people to stop keeping the laws of the Most High and they was killing people that were still trying to keep the laws of the Most High. There was a righteous branch in Israel, which was gonna be Yehuda uh, Maccabee with his father Mattathias, first told them that they was gonna stand against this evil. And so they stood against, they went and they fought against the evil ones. They reestablished righteousness amongst their people. They went in and they took the temple back over and they rededicated the temple. They tore all the, uh, the wicked things out. They cleansed the sanctuary and they renewed it basically. They restored it and then they rededicated it to um, the Most High. So Hanukkah is all about returning to the laws of the Most High, returning to the covenant of the Most High because people was forced to break them and lost their lives to, 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 uh, to, uh, to, uh, to either keep them or gave up their actual spirit or their soul to break them so that they could still live on the earth for men that was threatening them. So Hanukkah is all about rededicating to the Most High, rededicating the temple, and Judah or Yehuda Maccabee and his brothers continued to fight after the father told them to, to reestablish the set-apart temple, the righteousness in Israel, okay? Um, if we read on and during the days of Hanukkah, you know, we will have some online time to just read more of the history to get more of the details. We kind of given a short version right now, but each day we can actually read a portion going forward um, during the days of Hanukkah, just as a form of the celebration and get more in touch with the history of what was taking place during that time. But uh, what I want you to know is that even after they rededicated the temple, that it told it says that the nation, well, I'll read this part, Kanaki, I'm not going to go there on the screen, but I'm just going to read it. So I'm going back to 1st Maccabees real quick, just to read this. And this is 1st Maccabees, just the beginning of chapter 5. So in chapter 4, they rededicated the temple um, back to the Most High, and they ordained the day for Hanukkah to be remembered. So now in chapter 5, it says, Now when the nations round about heard that the altar was built, the sanctuary renewed, as before, it displeased them very much. Wherefore, they thought, to destroy the generation of Yaakov or Jacob that was among them. And thereupon they began to slay and destroy the people. Then Yehuda, a Judah, fought against the children of Esau in Adumia, uh, the Arbatine, because they besieged Israel. And he gave them a great overthrow and abated their courage and took their spoils. So just letting you know that even after they did dedicate this, Israel was still under attack even after the dedication took place. But the highlight that I want us to see is um, that, that once the nations heard that the altar was rebuilt, they was angry about that. They could not stand the fact of knowing that something as simple as the sanctuary, why is that a big deal to them? That's somebody else's sanctuary. You got yours. You don't believe like this. Then you can just stay away. But it's a reason for that because they knew that the Most High, which is the Elohim of Israel, that if they could get us to break the commands of the Most High, they will always be in power, right? So there's, so what we have to see even today, there is a reason still, there's a very ancient ruach of spirit still in the earth that wants to have the most highest people so pressed under their authority and under the wickedness. So they actually was displeased and they still kept the war going between Israel um, and themselves. So now we're going to jump to chapter, uh, second back of these, chapter two, and we're going to start at verse one just to read a little bit more, okay? And this is now recorded after these things have not taken place. So Hanukkah's already been established. This is now going into a time that's gonna be after Hanukkah already taken place. So let's read uh, chapter two and one. So Come on, chapter mm -hmm. two. It is also found in the records that Yermiah the prophet 
commanded them that were carried away to take up the fire, as it has been signified, and how that the prophet, having given the Torah, having given them the Torah, charged them not to forget the commandments of Yah, and that they should not err in their minds when they see images of silver and gold with their ornaments. Pause it for a second. So now they're reading, they're reading here and they're going into stuff talking about what Yeremiah the prophet have said. So they recorded his recordings and it says how that the prophet having given them the law of the Torah charged them not to forget. So if you think about Moses, when Moses told us not to forget, the reason why you're not to forget the commandments is because the Most High, when he called Israel out of Egypt to bring them to himself, he gave them instructions of how to serve him, how to love him, and how to be loved and provided for by him. All right. So now it's always been common theme throughout the only written book in history before there was ever a New Testament ever written, even during the time of the Messiah, which we heard him say himself, don't think that I come to do it with the law of the prophets. We see that even the prophets were always still saying what? Remember the commands of the Most High, do not forget them, because these are the words of the covenant. So everybody wants to be in covenant with the Most High, not understanding what a covenant actually is. A covenant is an agreement between two parties. So the Most High word is a covenant. So in order to be in covenant with the Most High, you need to know the words of the agreement of the covenant to be actually in a covenant or under the covenant of the Most High. So again, in the Tanakh, in the Torah, you're going to see repeatedly throughout Torah to, or the Tanakh, which is going to be the Old Testament, that all the prophets and all the teachers of old was always teaching the instructions of the Most High, or they went into a captivity for breaking the commands of the Most High. Then the prophet would be sent to them to, send, to direct them back to the Most High. Priesthoods and things would be reestablished, restored, and then they would start being taught Torah again. They would live during the time of Shalom once again, once they returned to the Most High. And once they started breaking the commands again, then they would go back into captivity because the Most High would forsake them whenever they turned away from him based upon the promises that's written in the Torah. So, again, with reading comprehension, if you read the book for yourself, you will be, be able to clearly see that thinking that the laws are done away with should never be a thought process when the whole book that was written, even during the time of the disciples, what they read, what they studied was the was the Tanakh. Then they understood the same things that I'm trying to convey to you now what is written. Keep the laws. Do not forget the laws. They read Jeremiah. They read Isaiah. They read the writings of Moshe and Moses. So these were the things that they knew was the word of Elohim or commonly called the word of God. All right. So and now that the prophet having given the Torah, charged them not to forget the commands of the Most High and that they should not err in their minds when they see images of silver and gold with their ornaments. So, uh, uh, as I said, be not dismayed at their signs. The silver and gold, we've, we've seen what's been said. He's telling you don't get caught up in idolatry. All right? Continue to read, Aki, verse 3. And with other such speeches exhorted he them that the Torah should not depart from their hearts. And with other such speeches, so that's one speech that we can recall that he said to them. And with other such speeches, exhorted he them that the law should not depart from their hearts. So whatever speeches, whenever the prophet Yeremiah was going around proclaiming the word of the Most High to the people of the Most High, whenever he was giving his speeches, whenever he gave his talks, whenever he cried aloud and spared not and lifted up his voice to the masses, to the multitudes, in the highways, byways, in the synagogues, wherever he went to speak these words, in his speeches, he would always say that the law should not depart from their hearts. The law should not depart from your hearts. So when we start reading this type of information, we have to now understand that if this has been something our forefathers always heard, we see they were saved. And when they were saved from Egypt, they was given these commands by the Most High himself. He told them, this is love, and this is how I will love you, and here's how you love me, and this should be in your heart always. These were the words the Most High himself said. Then all the men of old, of now of the prophets, they would always tell people to remember the Torah or the laws of the Most High, because those are the words of Elohim. So now we see that when Jeremiah was speaking with all his speeches, which every speech that he ever given is not recorded in the writings, but it's letting you know these are people that were not doing their time. This is history to them. So they're letting it be known that when he gave speeches, he would always in his speeches that the law should not depart from your hearts. So my focal point that I'm trying to get you to see is so this was always the 
the word of the prophets of old, why do we think that someone can come today and say the laws are done away with when they was always, when they went to the highways and byways, was teaching, return to the most high. How do you return to the most high? You must embrace his Torah. You must embrace his Torah. Those are his words. This is his will. Pick up at four. It was also contained in the same writing that the prophet, being warned of Elohim, commanded the tabernacle and the ark to go with, it, go with him as he went forth into the mountain where Moses climbed up and saw the heritage of Elohim. And when Yermia came thither, he found a hollow cave wherein he laid the tabernacle and the ark and the altar of incense and so stopped the door. And some of those that followed him came to mark the way. But they could not find him. Which when Yermia perceived, he blamed them, saying, As for that place, it shall be unknown until the time that Elim gathered his people again together and received them unto mercy. Then shall, then shall Yah show them these things, and the glory of Yah shall appear, and the cloud also, as it was showed unto Moses. And as when Shlomo this desire that the place might be honorably sanctified. So let's pause here one second. So now they're going into, they talk about Moshe, uh, talking about uh, Moshe when he went up to the mountain, what we should be able to uh, see at a certain point where Yah reveals, but I want to focus on verse eight for a moment. Then shall the Most High show them these things and the esteem of the Most High shall appear in the cloud also as it was showed un under Moses and as when Shalomo or Solomon desired that the place might be honorably sanctified or, or set apart, okay? So what I'm looking at is, uh, and what I'll be kind of going into going forward is, we have to learn how they looked at the Torah the Most High. We have to learn and get in touch with how they viewed the temple of the Most High. This wasn't just uh, a place to go. This was a place where they referenced with much respect. This was a place that before Solomon actually, there was actually the actual temple that he built before it was ever built. His father, David, wanted to build a house for the Most High. The Most High told him, I'm going to give you the floor plans and all of what I want in a temple, but you can't do it. Your song Solomon's going to do it. But also when we read last week, we could see the heart and the desire that David had to dedicate a place to the Most High, but his son did so. So, and he desired that the place might be honorably sanctified. So honorably set apart. So in order to know what something, how, how to set something apart, we must know the instructions of the Most High to know how to sanctify something. And so also what I want us to see is, but their mindset and their desire was not just, oh, I'm just going to show up. When they went to this temple, when they came to Torah, when they, when they embraced those who were righteously seeking the Most High, they really was desirous and it was a level of respect and honor upon understanding the Torah upon the temple of the Most High. All right, read on to verse 9. It was, so, it was also declared that he being wise offered the sacrifice of dedication and of the finishing of the temple. Okay, so, so Shalomo also offered uh, uh, sacrifices for the dedication and the finishing of the temple. This is the first temple that's being referred to. So Solomon built the actual first temple that was ever built that was actually the house of the Most High. Before that, of course, there was the places when they removed the Ark of the Covenant from place to place. It was in Shiloh, and you know, they would carry the Ark of the Covenant, but this is the actual first temple that was ever, ever built for the Most High and for all the set apart vessels and things to go into for the Most High. And this was because it was desirous of Malek Dawid to build a place where the ark didn't have to be on the move. It didn't have to just be out just under a, under a tent. He wanted a house for the belongings of the Most High that's dedicated totally to the Most High. So now Solomon has built this first temple and he's dedicating and he's bringing offers and sacrifices to this thing. So the very first dedication or the very first Hanukkah is going to be because the word Hanak means dedication. So Solomon dedicated the first temple this is not the feast of hanukkah that we're leading to but the understanding that these people had when they came and the, the maccabees they fought they wanted to rededicate a temple is because dedication of a temple was something that was already written and known to them and also they were in touch with the emotions or the feelings of how 
honorable it was for our forefathers to do this, how they desired to do this. So we need to return it back to the same type of esteem and the same type of honor, which we, brothers and sisters, have to learn to do with our lives. A lot of times we're happy that we found out that we the most high shows and, and we feel like we have a relationship with the most high, but we're really not living a truly dedicated, honorable life to the most high, which is something we all have to work on getting more dedicated. But it takes that mindset of thinking y'all first over everything. Continue to read our key. Verse 10. And as when Moses prayed unto Yah, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the sacrifices. Even so praised Solomon also. And the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offerings. And Moses said, because the sin offering was not to be eaten, it was consumed. So Solomon kept those eight days. The same things also oh, were. So, so Solomon kept those eight days, right? So Solomon kept those eight days. So now it's talking about him building the temple. It's talking about him doing something for eight days. So where we're hearing people say that it's this miraculous Hanukkah is about giving gifts and Hanukkah is about this miraculous all burning for eight days. No, there was already a dedication of a temple of the first temple, which was pretty much a, a, a eight day period. They had the seven days, then they would have that eight days. So the eight days has nothing to do with the miraculous oil burning for eight days. That's not what it's about. These men understood the instructions of the Most High. They understood that Shalom or Solomon, which name means Shalom or peace. They understood that he built the first temple to the Most High. He dedicated the temple to the Most High. And in doing so, it was an eight-day process, an eight-day period that took place in everything that he was doing for the dedication of the temple. So Hanukkah being observed for eight days is because they were understanding that, hey, this place has been defiled. We want to reestablish this temple. So as it was dedicated from the very beginning when the first temple was built, now that they defiled this temple that we now have, we need to de rededicate it back to the Most High. And so in dedicating it, there's a certain thing that we would do on a daily based upon what a dedication looks like from what our forefathers did. Continue to read, Aki. Verse 13. The same things also were reported in the writings and commentaries of Nehemiah. And how he found he found a library gathered together the acts of the kings and the prophets and of David and the books of the king concerning the holy gifts. And like manner also drew together together all those things that were lost by reason of the war we had, and they remained with us. Wherefore, wherefore. So now that Yehuda there, that Yehuda there, this is not talking about Yehuda Maccabee. So even though we're reading the book of Maccabees, this is now someone telling of a recording of Yeremiah, Nehemiah, Solomon. They're telling all these things. Now it's talking about in like manner also Yehuda gathered together all those things that were lost by reason of the world we had, and they remain with us. So now it's saying, so basically Yehuda and what we did in the rededication process, we're following the examples that was already written. We're trying to go back to doing things in like manner as our forefathers did. Read on, 15. Wherefore, if you have need thereof, send some to fetch them unto you. Whereas we then are about to celebrate the purification, we have written unto you, and he shall do well if you keep the same days. We hope also that Elohim, that delivered all his people gave them all the heritage and the kingdom and the priesthood and the sanctuary. As he promised in the Torah, will shortly show will shortly have mercy upon us and gather us together out of every land under heaven into the holy place. For he has delivered us out of great troubles and has purified the place. Okay, so I want to focus on verse 16 and 18. It says, whereas we then also we then are about to celebrate the purification. We have written unto you, and ye shall do well if ye keep the same days. So it's saying, hey, we're about to celebrate the purification because this is something that we've established and this is something we do and we keep. We're about to observe it. So we're about to observe Hanukkah or the purification. So Hanukkah is also a purification. It's, it's a representation of purification, a cleansing of the temple. And we're about to celebrate and we write to you and we hope that you will actually keep the same days by knowing the history, by knowing what we've done. By knowing what Judah and them have actually done and how they ordained this day, we are now keeping and observing it. 
And then it goes on to talk about um, how the Most High delivered the people um, and the kingdom and the priesthood and the sanctuary, as he promised in Torah, will shortly have mercy upon us and gather us together out of every land under heaven into the set apart place. For he hath delivered us out of great troubles and have purified the place. So in their day and age, and it's still ancient times to us, they're recalling how the Most High will deliver people from bondage and deliver them back to a set apart place for them to come to the place that's not going to be purified and set apart for them. But it's based upon in his Torah, in the words of the covenant, he tells us he will be merciful upon, uh, upon us and he will gather us from out of other out of lands. But in order for this to take place, there is something that we must do. We must be obedient to what was written in the Torah. Those things came with conditions. When you read the Torah, it says, because you break the Torah, if and when you break the Torah, I'm going to scatter you abroad throughout all nations, throughout the four corners of the earth. If you return to me and you start observing my laws and you circumcise your heart, then I will gather you from those places. So to say the law is done away with does away with us asking for or expecting the deliverance of the most high. So again, that's a trick of telling you the laws are done away with, because as I said before, when you the, the Septuagint was translated into Greek, which meant they wanted to know that he bred uh the he bred customs and culture also. So powers and rulers of times of old wanted to know everything about the nations around them. So they understood our Torah also and they started to understand how we got our power. It's because our power comes from the most high. So in the very word itself, it tells us that for these type of deliverance to take place. In Torah, it tells you for Yah to deliver you, you must return to Yah and his commands. What we're being taught today is that you don't have to keep his commands. And so, as I've said at the beginning of this lesson, um, uh, weeks ago, there is nothing new under the sun. It is the same ancient spirit that's trying to cause us to stay against the father so that the father will still be against us. Right. But here he promised that if we uh, he promised in his Torah will shortly have mercy upon us and gather us together out of every land under heaven unto the holy place for he have delivered us out of great troubles and have purified the place read on verse 19 now it's concerning Yehuda Maccabee and his brother and the purification of the great temple and the dedication of the altar and the wars against Antiochus Epiphanes and Jupiter his son and the manifest signs that came from heaven unto those that behaved themselves manfully to their honor for Judaism. So that being but a few, they overcame the whole country and chased barbarous multitudes and recovered again the temple renowned all the world over and freed the city and upheld the Torah which was, but which were going down, Yah being gracious unto them with all favor. Also for a second. So in verse 19, again, just for clarity's sake, now it's concerning Yehuda Maccabee and his brethren and the purification of the great temple and the dedication of the altar. So again, dedication is Hanukkah. Hanukkah is all about the purification of the great temple and the rededication of the altar. So Hanukkah is not about just lights. And it's not about gift giving. It is about the purification of the great temple and the dedication of the altar. And it's talking about Yehuda Maccabee and what he did and how him and his brother and a few people were manly men and he stood for the Torah. Now in verse 22, it says, and recovered again the temple, renowned all the world over and freed the city and upheld the laws of the Torah, which were going down and Yah being gracious unto them with all favor. So again, it's establishing what was this great feat that uh, Yehuda did? He reestablished, he rededicated the temple, the temple that was renowned, and he freed the city and he upheld the Torah, which they was trying to have go down. They was trying to bring it down. They was trying to do away with it. They was burning it and it was killing people not to keep it. But he made so where they fought for it and they made sure everything was rededicated, repurified, restored, reestablished. All right, continue on, Aki. Verse 23. All these things I say being declared by Jason of Cyrene in five books, we will say to abide in one value. For considering the infinite number and the difficulty which they find that desire to look into the narrations of the story for the variety of the matter, we have been careful that they that will read might have may have delight, and that they are desirous to commit to memory might have ease and that all into whose hands 
it comes might have profit. So might pause it for a second. So pause it for a second. So 23 through 25, without me going any further, um, if, if someone would, I'll take uh, about the first few hands. Could someone tell me what you're getting from 23 to 25? And remember, it says, with all that getting, get understanding. With all that getting, get understanding. We have reading and reading comprehension. So do we comprehend what we read? If, so real quick, if I can get about three uh, volunteers, what are you getting? And even if someone says something similar to what you were going to say, what are you getting from uh, 23 to 25? 23 to 25. Do we have any hands up? Because I can't see because I have my screen up. Are there any hands up? No, I don't. All right. I think I see. Uh, we got some. Okay. Yes, sir. Zach Kane. I was going to let uh, Shy go first, Moray, unless you just want me to go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, Shy. Shy, you go first, Zach okay? Yeah, just reading. It seems like they're doing what we're doing right now. You know, they're reading, you know, the word and trying to figure out, you know, what's going on. You know, so I see it's like it's the same thing. You know, nothing changed, nothing new under the sun. They're trying to read stories and narrations, trying to figure out, you know, what's going on and then trying to commit it to their memory so that they might have ease. You know, a you. OK, so from Shah's interpretation, he says it seems like they're doing what we're doing right now. OK. Ima Shoshana. Uh, to me, it appears that they're trying to record all that they've done to restore the temple, all the facts, and sum it up in a small, in a matter of books, they say, um, to um, declare exactly what was taking place of the um, rededication and purification of the temple and the altar. So Ima said it seemed like they're trying to record uh, all the facts and trying to put it in the summarized, uh, summarized details of all the things that happened or the rededication of the temple. Hallelujah. Zakhan Yaqua. Hello, yeah. Uh, I was saying the same thing as Ima Shoshana Moray, that they're trying to, all that took place is a whole lot, they're saying, but for the ease so that people that want to commit it to memory, people that want to do it and commit it to memory, they, they're trying to condense it down into like a summary um, so it'll be easy to remember and pass on to the next generation. Okay. Hallelujah. So as I can say, so they're trying to make it easy for those who actually want to have this to memory, want to try to understand it. They're trying to put it in a compact, condensed version that's easy to be understood, that everyone will understand what's going on, right? So um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna make this statement. This is not Torah. This is not Torah. This is not the words that the Most High gave to uh, to Moses. So you have those that will attack these writings, but this is just history. This is a historical recording. So as Shah said, so we can do what we're doing right now. So he came from the perspective. Sounds like they were doing what we're doing now, but it's a little different. They were doing what they were doing so that we could understand and do what we're doing now. We're writing and we're recording, and they put these things in books to record information the same way you have scholars today writing books there are authors that write books for you to read about courses of time and history we can go with every other history that someone writes but we can't go with biblical history we can't go with the history of something that took place when someone was trying to do away with the laws of the most high this is why they don't want it in there so yes they would come and say oh it didn't make the canon why not y'all have all these christian books you have all this so-and-so commentary, this commentary, that, and how to read the Bible and how to study the Bible books. You actually put words in the Bible to say this is what it means. So we have all this type of nonsense that go on today. But when you read a story that lines up with history that took place, people will say, well, that, 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 that's, that's not the word of God. These are the children of the Most High who lived in an ancient time that was recording what happened. The same thing, the same way historians have things that they record in history now. The sad part about it is a lot of times people edit history nowadays. They edit and insert who they want to be the victor of certain things that's historical, and you kind of have to navigate through. And so writing and recordings like this helps you see through the lies. So they wrote these books 
to record the history of what it is. So that way, when we who are Hebrews were thinking like I was, I'm not doing Hanukkah. That was me, my younger version of myself. I'm not going to do it because I don't really, it's too much like Christmas to me. It happened to fall close to Christmas. It happened to be in the same month as Christmas. Uh, Christmas got blue, red, orange, yellow lights. Hanukkah got all the white lights and lighting the candle. They still giving presents. Oh, but it's better than Christmas because we give gifts for eight days. And on Christmas, you get gifts for one day or maybe two Christmas Eve and Christmas. So to me, I'm like, that ain't got nothing to do with the most high. That just looked like a cop out to try to get people to want to embrace this walk by giving them something like Christmas. But no, when you read the recording of these books, you don't see any of this stuff about the lights and all that being recorded here. What you see is it was a purification and a rededication of the temple and the history behind how this thing came into being. The atrocities or the murders or the massacres that took place, these things are recorded in short form for us to understand why our heart and desire should be as they requested earlier. We're writing to you hoping that y'all would observe these days. And what we've done, we put things in a book so that people can understand why it is that we're doing what we're doing. And now going back to using common sense for nonsense, the Messiah said that, don't think that I come to do away with the law of the prophets. Anything that's talking pro-law, as Messiah said, pro-law, when they're teaching this false Jesus that the laws are done away with and following the writings of the false Paul, and I'm going to call them the false Paul because they're teaching them wrong. And so they teach that the laws are done away with. When you read these recordings, when you read what Mashiach said, and when you read what all the prophets said, and now when you read this, you decide for yourself what your spirit tells you. The reason why I want other people to explain before I explain, because can you copy him what you read for yourself? We recorded this history so that others will be able to have this thing, retain it to memory for themselves, to actually be able to embrace it if they want to embrace it or not. I'm not even telling anyone that doesn't do it that you have to do it. I'm just saying for me in my house, we observe it. For me in my Knesset, in the Knesset that I'm of the shepherd of, we teach these things and we observe it because if it would not have been for their lives and for their fight and for their righteousness, there may not have ever been a us. Unless the most high would always leave a remnant. If we just looking at the natural, the natural, the natural of it, there might not have been a us, or if there was of us, it would only be a wicked version of ourselves, the ones that sold out to sin, and we would have never known the most high, and we've just been living a life of vanity until the day of demise. Let me calm back down. It's supposed to be a teaching night, not a preaching night, but I, let's go back to it tonight. Y'all call up the last verse and continue to read, Aki. Verse 26. Therefore, to us that have taken. Hold on, hold on. Let me let me let me go back here. Twenty four, real quick. For considering the infinite number and the difficulty which they find that desire to look into the narrations of the story for the variety of matter, we have been careful that they that will read may have delight, and that they that are desirous com to commit to memory might have ease. And that all into whose hands it comes might have profit. These words is hopefully to profit someone. And for anyone to take it to memory that they will have a delight to do these things. Now for us writing it, it was painful to have to rewrite this history. It was painful of what, what, what took place and have to recall these things to memory. But we hope this is profitable to those who were in years to come would read this or those in whom hands these pages come across will be able to see we're supposed to fight for our lives and laws. So what's the profit for us today? We've been taught that the laws are done away. When we read this, what's the profit of us now? It's no way possible that my mind can accept that the laws is done away with. It's no way possible that my mind can accept that the most high would have Yahusha Yeshua come and say, you ain't got to keep no laws. Then he will let Paul say the laws is done away with. When so many people died to honor the most high, to establish the way of the most high, to say, I'm never going to turn on the most high. And now all we can do is say, forget the most high. I don't love the most high. Why out of our mouth say, I love the most high, but not according to knowledge. I love the most high while committing adultery. I love the most high while being a sodomite or an effeminate or homosexual. I love the most high while committing adultery. But God is love, so his grace is sufficient for me. All I got to do is believe and I shall be saved. So I can believe that. 
I can believe that he's going to let people, honorable men and women, give their life to love him, to honor him, and say, you know, you can't take these laws from us. This is the way to our power. This is the way to Allah. This is the way to our God, whose name is Yah. We're not turning on this. This is the prophet that it did for me. This is how it helps me. I know people started keeping Shabbat from hearing this Hanukkah story. They were on the fence, but when they heard the story about Hanukkah, they understood that Sabbath has always been under attack. If you have been warned with, well, should we really keep these laws or not? This should profit you because you should be able to see clearly as we continue to go through these stories that that doctrine has been created from a very long time. Through the crusades of Christianity, there was death. And even before that time, there was death to those that was keeping the Torah. And what happened is we're living in a generation where the wars have been fought. So now people just easily and willingly submit to the laws are done away with because they desire the life that they live in sin. 26, Aki. Therefore, to us that have taken upon us this painful labor of abridging, abridging, it was not easy, but a matter of sweat and watching. Even that is, as it is no ease unto him that prepares a banquet and seeks the benefit of others. Yet for the pleasuring of many, we will undertake gladly this great pains. So it, ain't, it wasn't easy the same way it is to prepare a banquet for others to have a great time. Preparing this book was not easy, and we had to go to great pains to prepare this book. Read on 28. Leaving to the author the exact handling of every particular and laboring to follow the rules of an abridgment. Of an abridgment. Abridgment is to make something somewhat shorter, to condense it. So we want it to be truthful, but we have to condense it because we can't give all the information. Continue to read. For as the master builder of a new house must care for the whole building, but he that undertakes it, it to set it out and paint it must seek out fit things for the adorning thereof. Even so, I think it is with us to stand upon every point and go over things at large and to be curious in particulars belongs to the first author of the story. But to use brevity and to avoid much laboring of the work is to be granted to him that will make an abridgment. Verse 32, here then will we begin the story. Only adding thus much to that which has been said, that is the foolish thing to make a long prologue and to be short in the story itself. So we're going to try to make it brief as possible, but we're going to try to condense it, but we're going to be very particular. We're going to give a large detail. We're going to give a lot of the story, but we don't want to have a long prologue and then the story itself be super short. So we're going to go through the pains. We're going to give a little bit of detail behind how this day came into being for the profit and for the benefit of others. And we are the others, uh, brothers and sisters. So sneak out one moment. Let's go to... So like I said, we try to uh, fill in some of the... Uh, some of the gaps and some of the rest of the story when we uh get an opportunity but we're just gonna jump right to this chapter now um six and this is this is skipped a whole lot of the information but i just want to go and show some of the things that was taking place so uh six and one Aki, six and one so that was chapter two we were just reading there's a whole lot more information in between that's even more of first maccabees we haven't even completed that book there's a lot to read but i just want to kind of get to some of the highlighted points so, uh, 2 Maccabees chapter 6, and we start with verse 1, Aki. Not long after this, the king sent an old man of Athens to compel the Jews to depart from the Torah of their fathers, and not to live after the Torah of Elohim, and to pollute also the temple in Jerusalem, and to call it the Temple of Jupiter Olympus. And that in garrison, a garrison of Jupiter, the defender of strangers, as they did desire that dwelt in the place. The coming in of this mischief was sore and grievous to the people. For the temple was filled with riot and revelry by the other nations, who dallied with harlots and had to do with women within the court 
within the, excuse me, within the circuit of the holy places. And besides that, brought in things that were against the Torah. Verse 5. The altar also was filled with profane things, which the Torah forbids. Neither was it lawful for a man to guard the days of Sabbath or of ancient feasts, or to profess himself at all to be a Jew. And in the day of the king's birth every month, they were brought in, they were brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices. And when the feast of Bacchus was kept, the Jews were compelled to go in procession to Bacchus carrying ivy. Moreover, there went out a decree to the neighboring cities of the heathen by the suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews that they should observe the same fashions and be partakers of their sacrifices. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manners of the other nations should be put to death. Then might a man have seen the present misery. For there were two women brought who had circumcised their children. So pause it for a second. So what we can see is that they were still trying to, as they, uh, as it's saying, they were trying to get uh, men to break this. And it was a particular man, if you go back to the beginning, uh, uh, and try to get them to, uh, to go and get the people to uh, uh, break the laws of the Most High and to pollute also the temple. Um, it says, the altar also was filled with profane things which the law forbiddeth. So again, the Torah is saying what is forbidden to be on an altar. These things were put on the altar. So even in churches, even modern day churches today, there's things that we just should not even have in a church because if we actually try to be servants of the Most High, then we should know there's certain things the Most High don't even want his people exposed to. So at this particular time, during this, this temple time here, these things were happening. The altar also was filled with profane things. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient, they have fasts here and some translations have feasts or to profess himself at, at all to be a Yahoo. So now here's the thing. You can't even pre, you can't even confess to be an Israelite. You can't even confess to be Yehuda. They, uh, so again, when you now go to the book of Psalms, when it said they want the white Israelite from being a nation, they wanted to be no more in remembrance. So you see here, this is also the fulfillment of that type thing. Uh, neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath. Why do you care what day somebody worship? Right now, I'm, I'm, I'm being honest with you. I can care less about what people that don't want to serve the Most High is doing. If they want to go out and party tonight, so be it. If they don't want to keep Shabbat, that's on them. Now, yes, I do desire to bring forth the word, and I hope that those who the Most High want, or those who sincerely want to serve the Most High, will hear the word when we're presenting the word, and will accept the word. But anybody that's a mocker, scorner, that uh, that has disdain or disgust for the laws of the Most High, what they're doing in their house tonight, what they do tomorrow, what they do on the feast days, that don't bother me, and it probably don't bother any of you. So then my question would be, why does it bother them how someone else is worshiping in their temple? Y'all got y'all temple. Because it's a spiritual reason behind this, Mr. McCaw. This is the adversary. This is anti yah So neither was it lawful for a man to keep Sabbath days or ancient feasts or to profess himself at all to be Yahuda. They don't want you to be, they don't even want you to know who you are. They wanted those things to be forgotten. Um, dropping down. And whoso would not conform themselves to the, I mean, verse 9. And, and whomsoever would not conform themselves to the manners of the Gentiles should be put to death. Then might a man have seen the present misery. So they're recording these things. So now here it is. They want you to bow down to their laws. They want you to bow down to their gods. And if you don't do it, then you're going to be put to death. So it is showing you how by force it was causing people to break the commands of the Most High or either fight for the commands of the Most High and they may lose their life. All right, verse 10, pick up and continue to read. For there were two women brought who had circumcised their children, whom when they openly led round about the city, the babes hanging at their breast, they cast them down headlong from the wall. So pause. So we've already read in those first books that we read of in First Maccabees, We've read about women being put to death for killing their children. We, we've read about people being brought that they was keeping, the, uh, that they were circumcised and they were trying to keep the commands, they was put to death. That's a quick summarized version. 
This now is giving you some details, some details that we're really not far removed from. We're far removed from this detail at this time, but I'm saying we as a people are not far removed from understanding matters like this. For there were two women brought who had circumcised their children. Who cares what someone else do to their child? That's your baby. You have to raise them. Whom when they had openly led round about the city, the babes handing, uh, handing at their breasts, they cast them down headlong from the wall. While a child is having sucked to get the nutrients from his mother, while a child is feeding, or while a mother is feeding her child for circumcising her child and keeping the laws of the Most High, this is how cruel these people were. Cruelty. So you're going to go grab them and parade them around the city. Y'all see what's going to happen to anybody else that circumcised their children? They circumcised their children while these little babies are feeding off their mom's breasts? Throw them off the wall head, headlong. That's evil. And the reason why I say we're not far removed, we came in cargo slave ships to America. Cruelty for what? You still have to ask yourself the same for what? Even when we're mad with people, we might deal with a man that's trying to come against us and our family, but who's going to throw a wife and a woman headlong while feeding the baby for how they worship because they circumcised their children? This is evil at an all-time high. And so, yes, we may get a little compassionate when talking about this, but this is why they're saying this thing is a little bit painful for them. They have to write these recordings because they have to remember this stuff to put it the details for us to understand. So now y'all really believe the laws are done away with? This is how they got y'all to believe this. They made y'all scared. They killed a whole bunch of y'all. And so now y'all are the offspring of some scared people that came up as slaves not knowing your creator. But your forefathers and mothers who was righteous, who really loved the most high, would never do what y'all doing right now. They would rather die first. Or would y'all easily walk around and accept that the laws are done away with? But when hearing this, it would make me not want to be a sellout. Verse 11, our key. And others that have run together into caves nearby to guard the Sabbath secretly, being discovered by Philip, were all burnt together because they made a conscience to help themselves for the honor of the most sacred day. So y'all remember when we read about that last week? So it's now talking about those that ran to the caves. So listen, okay, y'all done took our temple over. All right, have that. We understand. We lost. We messed up. Our Some of our brothers let y'all in. The wickedness is in here. But we're going to go on the run. So we're going to get out of Dodge. We're going to go in the cave somewhere private. So we can still worship the most high. They went to the caves to seek these people out and they burnt them together because they made a conscience to help themselves for the honor, the most sacred day. You can't take the most sacred day that the most high says now in the book of Bereshit, chapter two, that he sanctified, he set the day apart, the most sacred day to say it don't matter what day you worship. All days are the same. They never thought that back then. They said this is the most sacred day. They was constantly like we have to go somewhere to keep Shabbat. We're not going to stay amongst this place that's profane and they tell us we can't keep Sabbath. We're going to go someplace privately. We're going to go hide ourselves. We're going to go keep Sabbath. They hunted them down and burnt them for the honor and the most sacred day. So remember when I said about seeing the mindset that they had? We have to get back in touch with the ancient mindset of what righteousness is actually like. The fact that this Torah it's the words of the Most High. Not that we make Torah our religion, but that we understand that these are the words of our Father who left them to us. These are the words of the covenant. And if we want to be with our Father, we have to embrace his laws. We should honor his laws. We should not compromise and give ourselves to a false way because of the threat of the enemy. Verse 12. Now I beseech those that read this book that they be not discouraged for these calamities, but that they judge those punishments not for not to be for destruction, 
but for a chastening of our nation. Verse 13, for it is a sign of his great goodness when wicked doers are not suffered any long time, but forthwith punished. For not as with other nations whom Yah patiently forbears to punish, till they have come to the fullness of their sins, so he deals, so deals he with us. Lest that being come to the height of sin afterwards, he should take vengeance of us. So look, verse 12, I beseech those that read this book, that they be not discouraged. This is not to discourage you for these calamities, but that they should judge those punishments not to be for destruction, but for the chastening of our nation. So there was some that still did die, and there was some that went through the stuff because of the punishment of the nation. Remember, there was Israelites who wanted a license to sin. So there was Israelites that caused it to come upon Israel. That's why we read about uh, Malek Dawid last Shabbat, how when he numbered the people, how the Most High's wrath came upon the people. Malek, or King David said, you know what? I did this, I brought this wrath upon the people. But here it said, don't look at this as to be discouraged, but understand that this thing happened for the chastening of our nation. For it is a token or a sign of, of his great goodness, which... When wicked doers are not suffered any long time, but for with punished, for not as with other nations whom the most high patiently forbeareth to punish. So again, sometimes when you see other people looking blessed while living in sin, the most high is patience with them. I ain't called them. I ain't delivered them. I did not deliver them. They were not called my chosen. I did not give them my oracles, my Torah. I did not call them sons and daughters. I did not call them by my name. I called y'all. So that's why I'm giving y'all the business. So some people lose faith because they look at the blessings of those that don't keep Sabbath and the people in the world when you give into the world and how you can achieve things in society. Just understand the most high dealing more patiently with those whom he didn't call. But he's punishing those who are under covenant. Everybody wasn't under covenant with the Most High. Israel was. So he dealt with us and we got punished for these things till they come to the fullness of their sins. So deal with he with us. 15. Lest that being come to the height of sin afterwards, he should take, he should take vengeance of us. Before let us get too wicked where he should take vengeance on us and just do away with us. These things happen when you go into these captivities because in his word it already says this will happen to you. So these things happen. And yes, in the midst of that, there will be some innocent people that's affected because what the leadership or what the wickedness of our nation has done, there's others that will also feel the wrath of the Most High because of what we've done as a whole, as a nation. But it's also for our profit. Because sometimes if we just have everything good all the time, you know what we would do? As me and Ima Audrey said, man, how in the world when we sit and read this word every year, how do they turn away from Yah? How does a person just not love Yah? How do they do it? See, once they got blessed and Yah gave them so much, they forget the most high. So sometimes these punishments come upon to keep people focused on Yah. So they don't come to the height of their sin and then he takes us out in vengeance. Read on in 16, Aki. And therefore, he never withdraws his mercy from us. And though he punished with adversity, yet he never forsakes his people. So this also gives us a visual of the people that say, what type God? This is the mercy of the Most High. A lot of people die, but what we have to understand is they would die because they was in sin. And because they were in sin, they also caused good brothers and sisters to die also. And even some of them good brothers and sisters that die before they die, they even understand this step. We understand that we, we might be possible going through this because something we've actually done in our past, but we still going to serve the most high right now. Yet do he, uh, it says, and therefore he never withdraws his mercy from us. And though he punished with adversity, this is a very adverse situation, Mr. Kyle. Yet do he never forsake his people. Continue to read. Verse 17. But let this be spoken now for a warning unto us. And now will we come to the declaring of the matter in a few words. 
Eliezer are one of the principal scribes, an aged man, and of a well-favored countenance, was constrained to open his mouth and to eat swine's flesh. So let's 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 pause here for a second. So say these things being spoken should be spoken for warning to us, for us to know how we ended up in this position, the things that was taking place to let us end up here, and also for warning to us with even how to endure in situations as such. So now I'm talking about Eleazar, one of the principal scribes, an aged man, and of a well-favored countenance, was constrained to open his mouth and to eat swine flesh, meaning they were holding him down, trying to make him eat swine flesh. Why is it so important to make someone eat swine flesh? And so now when people want to say it don't matter what you eat, God will judge you based on what you eat, you better read Leviticus chapter 11. And it definitely tells you that the Most High says, be ye holy or be ye set apart as I am set apart. Dietary is key also. And, and as Mashiach said, as we start this thing off, he who breaks the least of these commandments and teaches men to break the least of the commandments shall be called least in the kingdom. So what we eat is a big deal. It's not a small matter. Anything that's a commandment of the Most High that we break, it's always a big deal. But here, what we've seen is some, something that moderately and in current times people want to act like, it ain't no big deal what you eat. Then why was it a big deal for them to make someone eat swine flesh? Because it's making you break the commandment of Yah. But what did he do, though? 19. But he choosing rather to die gloriously than to live stained with such an abomination, spit it forth and came of his own accord to the torment. But he choosing rather to die gloriously than to live stained with such an abomination. What abomination? Something as simple as eating swine's flesh. That he did not even willingly eat himself. They was forcing it down his throat, but he still said, you know what, I'm not going to eat this. And he spit it out. But he said, I would rather die gloriously in my esteem and in my honor to the creator than to live stained with such an abomination spit it forth and came of his own accord to the torment so swine's flesh is abomination to abomination in hebrew is toy by means disgusting so for you to eat swine's flesh for you to eat crabs and stuff like that that's an abomination to the most high and so this man says he spit it out and of his own accord came to the toilet. You might as well go ahead and kill me. Here I am. I'm not going to eat that. Go ahead and put me to death. Read on to verse 20. As it behooved them to come that are resolute to stand out against such things as are against the Torah for love of life to be tasted. But they didn't have the charge of that wicked feast for the old. Hold on, hold on a second. As it behooved them to come that are resolute to stand out against such things as are not lawful for the love of life to be tasted. Look, I'm doing these things because he wants to set an example for others. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to I'm not going to give in. And so he's also setting an example for anyone else that would see this example. Why don't they want these recordings? Why do they want to make it seem like, oh, that's not the word of God? Well, I got a teaching on the word of God. It is not the word of God. It is not the word of the most high. The word of the Most High is the first five books. Newsflash. Even some of us Hebrews don't even really know what the word of the Most High is. The word of the Most High is the first five books. The Torah. The Tanakh is the prophets talking about the word of the Most High. The Brit Kadashah and the Tanakh are pretty much commentary. It's the lives of people living and keeping or either breaking the commands of the Most High. But the word of the Most High is the first five books. It said, these words I command you this day. Here are the words that they came to the rock and they got. Now, of course, we know the Most High spoke through the prophets. But the recorded word of the Most High is the first five books is the Torah. So for when they come try to use that, well, that's not the word of God. And they want to give you that little churchy over spiritual stuff. No, this is the word of the Most High, because these are men and women that had the word of the Most High. They were living by it. So this is a historical recording of men that either broke the word of the Most High or men that stood for the word of the Most High, which prophets me and you to let us know that the laws are not done away with. And it's a trick. 21, Aki. But they didn't have the charge of that wicked feast for the old acquaintance 
they had with the man, taking him aside, besought him to bring flesh of his own provision, such as was lawful for him to use, and make it as if he did eat of the flesh that was taken up from the sacrifice commanded by the king. 21, 21 only, give me a quick answer, don't go to them long answers. Explain to me exactly what y'all see in 21. What just took place? Somebody help me out in 21. And y'all know Zakane Yaquab is going to raise his hand last because he's trying to give everybody this opportunity. So it don't take a long drawn out answer. Just explain to me real quick what you see in 21. Somebody help me out. No one? Let me read it again while you're thinking about it. But they that had the charge of the command of the feast, of this wicked feast, for the old acquaintance they had with the old man, taking him aside, besought him to bring flesh of his own provision, such as was lawful for him to use, and make as if he did eat of the flesh taken from the sacrifice commanded by the king. Adon Mikael. Basically, they were trying to get him to front like he was eating it eating fly, um, swine's flesh, but they were trying to get him to use something that he would could could eat of his his own self. <laughs> but Hold it on. was all fake. Hold on. Shashamar, you had anything else to add? Yeah, basically he wanted to uh, basically fake like he was eating the swine's flesh, but at the same time, you know... Say, say, say that again, say that again, say that again. It's important. Every, every word we say is very important. Say it again. So it seemed like they wanted him to fake like he was eating the swine's flesh, but at the same time, that's still bringing shame to the Most High's name. I okay, hear. so they wanted him to fake it. Okay, Zakan Yaqua. Okay, Moray, and I agree with everything everybody else just said, but but the 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 main point is to this was a respected elder of the of the community. If they see him eating uh, swine's flesh, they said, "Well, he's got the knowledge. He's got the wisdom." You know, uh, maybe he, maybe we should follow his his uh, suit, follow after him. That's what they wanted to happen. Hallelujah! So Zakane went on into the details of the why. This is a respected elder. This is a known man in the community. If we can get him to do it, we got everybody else. Because if he gives in, they're going to give in. Now that what Adol Mikael and Shashima said, they want him to fake it. But they that had charge of the wicked feast for the old acquaintance they had with the man, they, they knew him also. So sometimes men that's carrying out orders of wicked men, they don't even really want to have to carry out the orders themselves. Or if they do carry it out, man, we know this guy. We know this acquaintance. We got an acquaintance with him. This is an old acquaintance. So man, look, I really don't want to kill him. He that came and said, go ahead and kill me. I don't even really want to kill him. Man, we, will you just, look, man, what you can do, go get, go get a lamb piece of lamb and put it in some bread and we're going to come up here and say you eating pork chops. Go get a lamb chop. We're going to say it's a pork chop. But just do this before the people. So it will look like you're keeping the command of the king for the purpose, like Zakane said, to cause your people to follow the example of the elder. Do you see why it is so important for elders and leader people and leadership to try our best to be upright? The reason why a lot of people end up in sin is because of wicked leadership and wicked elders. Weak men. Weak leaders. So what goes on, and I'm not trying to be offensive to anyone. Not trying to be offensive. But if you are at, of any form of leadership in any church that have been teaching the laws are done away with, you need to reconsider what you're teaching the people. You're a sellout. If you are a pastor sitting up in these churches telling people that it's okay, and I've done heard of some of the stories, I've done heard of some say to people, it's okay to eat that because the laws are done away with, but I don't eat it myself. But if you don't eat it, tell me why you don't eat it. Then there's those that know that the Sabbath is a certain day, but they still won't keep it because they don't want to teach it to their church. But if I teach it to the church member, the elders in the church and the mothers of the church going to rise up against the pastor. And as the church has so much authority to appoint who they want to be a pastor, they're going to kick me out from being a pastor. And they're going to put another person in place to teach them the lies. So some pastors will not even teach the truth. And they themselves know the truth also. But you cannot stand before the people and lie. You cannot even do right yourself, but tell the people it's okay to do wrong. That's not a man or woman of the most high. 
But this elder said, I'm not going to let my name be stained because the same way they want other people to follow a bad example, I'm not going to give them an example. I'm going to give them a powerful example to follow so that when the generations to come or any that stand about it know me, that respect me and my love for the creator, they're going to follow suit and they're going to stand for y'all also. That's why they want these type writings taken out, Mr. McCaw, because it empowers you to stand up against the lie and it empowers you with true faith to stand for y'all and saying, you know what, I'm not going to let my name or my character be tarnished because I'm not going to take the name of the most high in vain. 22, Aki. That in so doing, he might be delivered from death and for the old friendship with them, find favor. So look, the old friendship. So that was cool with him. You see what I'm saying? So that's sometimes when people have to carry out orders so that they don't die. We got to carry this order out because the king gave us a decree. But we still have a little friendship with this guy. We don't really want to put him to death. That in so doing, he might be delivered from death and for the old friendship with them, find favor. But he didn't want that kind of favor. 23. What he began to consider discreetly and as became his age and the excellency of his ancient years and the honor of his gray head, whereon was come and his most honest education from a child, or rather the holy Torah made and given by Lee. Therefore he answered accordingly, and willy and excuse me, and willed them straight ways to send him to hell. So listen, brothers and sisters, we are still flesh. What we see here, but he began to consider discreetly. So he's kind of probably his thoughts like, okay, well, look, I ain't breaking the commandment. <laughs> so I want y'all to see how the adversary also still works. Nice and kind is not always good. Nice and kind is not always good. One more time. Nice and kind is not always good. See, the way I teach the word, sometimes people want to say, well, he always yelling. But somebody else will come nice and kind and tell you the laws are done away with. God is love, and all you got to do is this. Oh, because they said it nice and gently and kind. You go with that. What I want you to see is, in our flesh, Mishmachai, for the survival of our life, doubts may kick in. The adversary will present things in a way where, look, so you're not really breaking it. So now he has to consider, well, look, I'm not breaking the commandment, so I really ain't doing nothing wrong. So look, I get to keep my life. They, 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 these are my friends. We kind of got a little relationship, even though they have another nation or whatever. Even, even though, you know what I'm saying, we cool and they, they want to spare my life. All I got to do is pretend. I didn't break no commands. Uh, let me think about that. But he began to consider discreetly and as became his age, he got back mature real quick. And as became his age and the excellence of his ancient years, I'm a man of the most high. I'm an elder in this community. I know what they're trying to get me to do. Even if I fake it, I'm causing others to sin. I got to be a man of my age and excellence of my ancient years. And the honor of his gray head, that live a long life, to be a gray-headed old man, old woman, is an honor from the most high. Whereon was come and his most honest education from a child, or rather the set apart law, so his most honest, honest education from a child so for a child he was taught and it says rather the set apart law of torah made and given by allah elohim whose name is yah so that's what he said he went back to oh now nah, for me being trained up in the child rather in the most set apart law of the most high made and given by the most high Therefore, he answered accordingly and willed them straight ways to send him to the grave. Nope, I don't want that deal. I'm never eating pork. And I'm never going to pretend to eat pork. I'm not going to act like something I'm not. I'm not going to compromise my name, my image, or the name of my father to cause others to stumble because I failed. Not going to do it. So when you read stuff like this, this empowers you, brothers and sisters. This profits you to see that by design, there's sellouts in our community right now teaching you the lies. Because they're friends with the enemy. 
They're friends with the enemy. They done took their deal. They're getting their pay. They have their big house and their nice cars. While telling you how not to serve the creator. They have their reward. 24 IQ. For it becomes not our age, said he, in any wise to dissemble, whereby many young persons might think that Eleazar, being 80 years old and 10, 90 years old, were now going to a strange religion. And so they threw my hypocrisy and my and desire to live a little time and moment longer should be deceived by me and I get a stain to my old age. Look, I'm 90 years old. I'm not going to in any way let the younger generation say, you know what? We see Eleazar, the 90 year old righteous elder in our community. He was given over to a strange religion. He did what they said do, so we're going to do it too. He lived. It's okay. He says, and so they, through my hypocrisy of me being a hypocrite and desire to live a little time and a moment longer, should be deceived by me. What does it say in the brick college? He that finds his life, or he that tries to save his life, gonna lose his life. But you that give your life for the sake of the most high will gain life. What he's saying here is, so me wanting to live a little longer, am I going to sin and cause many to fall by me being a hypocrite because of my desires? Should they be deceived by me and I gain a stain to my old age and make it abominable? I have been righteous and my name unstained all this time. Am I going to die an abominable old man that was the one that led the younger generation, young men and women, young persons to this strange religion? Newsflash, Mr. God, he didn't. But there's a lot of our elders that's doing so. 26. For though for the present time I should be delivered from the punishment of men, yet should I not escape the hand of the Almighty, neither alive nor dead. Wherefore now, manfully changing this life, I will show myself such one as my age requires. And leave a notable example to such as be young to die willingly and courageously for the honorable and holy Torah. And when he had said these words, immediately he went to the torment. Verse 29. They that led him changing the good, will they bore him a little before into hatred? Because the foresaid speeches proceeded, as they thought, from a desperate mind. But when he was ready to die with stripes, he groaned and said, It is manifest unto Yah that has the holy knowledge that whereas I might have been delivered from death, I now endure sore pains in body by being beaten. But in soul am well content to suffer these things because I fear him. And thus this man died, leaving his death for an example of a noble courage and a memorial of virtue, not only unto young men, but unto all his nation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, wherefore now, manfully changing this life, I would show myself such as one of mine age and leave a notable example to such young to die willingly and courageously for the honorable and set apart Torah laws. And when he said these words, he went to the torment. He said that he was going to actually serve the most high and I would rather die at the stripes of man than to actually be against the most high. But when he was ready to die with stripes, he groaned and said, it is manifest unto the most high that hath the set apart knowledge that whereas I might have been delivered from death, I now endure sore pains and body being beaten, but in soul am I well content to suffer these things because I fear him. The fear of Yah is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of Yah is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of Yah is the beginning of being accepted by Yah. If we don't fear the Most High, we have nothing anyway. And do we fear man that can only kill the body? Or do we fear the Most High who can fear the soul? So now you tell me, 
Do you feel like this lines up with the word or no? Or do you see why some want you not to read this? Because it's easier to push the laws done away with with you not reading this. Again, I might have delivered, been delivered from death. I not endure sore pains in body by being beaten, but in soul I am well content to suffer these things because I fear him. And thus this man died, leaving his death for an example of a noble courage and a memorial of virtue, not only unto young men, but unto all his nation. I would rather fear Yahoo who can kill the soul, the body and the soul, than to fear man who can just take life of the body. I'm not going to let my name be stained. And though this is going to hurt, though I'm going to have to endure this pain and this torture and this torment, I would rather now in my old age endure this torment in this life that I might be pleased in the sight of the creator. And I'm hoping that young men and a young nation that sees what I do for the creator would also honor him the same way by following my example. This is why they take these books out. What harm is it doing? Nothing in here is telling you to be wicked. Nothing in here is telling you to sin. It is only showing you that men who didn't want to sin and men who really love the Most High fought for their life in Torah. Fought to rededicate, to restore, to purify the set-apart temple, the Sabbath day, and to circumcise their flesh and their hearts according to the word of the Creator to be his sons and daughters. And with that, I pray and hope everyone got some wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And I hope this word has been encouraging to you all as it's been encouraging to me. As the writers have said, they hope that it would encourage and it would profit those who read thereof. And as Eleazar, the old man said, who they were writing about as one of those that suffered during that time, as an honorable mention in the books, in this recording, he said that I hope that my example gives courage to other young men and to my whole nation. So with that, I give all praise and honesty to the Most High. I'm going to stop the screen share. Um, we have a lot more reading to do, but this is just a little encouragement, Mishmachai, and the mindset that our forefathers had of keeping these laws. So now, when they say the law is done away with, when reading stuff like this, along with the rest of the Tanakh that we've already read, and all of the prophets that's always crying out us, return to the laws of the Most High, can we not see the trick that the adversary is doing by saying the law is done away with, let people live this lawless lifestyle, men with men, men wanting to be women, having changes, women wanting to be men, eating all types of abominable things, doing all types of lascivious acts. And I was even talking about Isha uh, today. And I'm not trying to be offensive to anyone. If your lifestyle is your lifestyle, that's your lifestyle. Just repent, because I have my own sins that I had to work on in my life. So this is in no way knocking anyone. This is just facts. This is just facts. Even when we was growing up in our sin, because everybody here did not come up as virgins and came married and only been with their wife or their husband for their whole life. Some people have actually done some things before coming to the knowledge of the truth. There's people that have fornicated. We have fornicators that have repented of fornication that's on this call, that listening in. But when man and woman of old was in fornication, they still did their fornication in private. They still had the decency to go into their house and let their nudity and their sin be hidden. But this LGBT movement is going into the schools, going to the children, it's on TV, in the gyms where you work out at. I remember I was working out in the gym. Even heterosexual couples, even married couples, don't get on a bench where the wife is laying on the bench and a husband would get on top of his wife as, and doing bodily gestures as they would do in the bedroom. This is a public facility. I have seen sodomites on the equipment in gyms groping and pumping each other on a bench. This is a public place. They're walking around with their butt cheeks hanging out in these gay parades. This is wickedness on an all-time high. And y'all want to just say God is love and God loves everybody? No, he don't. He doesn't. 
When you now go to the brick cottage out of New Testament, it tells you that an effeminate or a sodomite cannot and will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. So transgender community, the kingdom of the most high is not for you. But we're not going to just focus there. An adulterer, if you're in adultery, you can't get into the Most High's kingdom. The Most High does not love everybody. This generation we're living in is so wicked, and this LGBT community is super wicked. And anybody that's in the LGBT community, I'm not speaking to you as an individual. I'm speaking to the spirit that rules your community, that has you living a contrary life to the Most High. And I'm trying to say this now in the spirit of love. If you want to love, be loved by the Creator, if you want a relationship with Him, you have to repent of that lifestyle. You have to come out of that. The Most High written laws, left us laws, statutes, and commandments, and he said, what's punishable by death and how you will be blessed and receive of him. Anyone telling you anything else is lying to you. That is the adversary who spoke to Eve from the very beginning. And with that, I give all praise, all honor, all esteem to the Most High. I'm not speaking at you. I'm just passionately speaking to you. And not to LGBT only, Adulterous, those that are in witchcraft, if you are a witch, dealing with necromancy, burning all types of ingredients and doing spells, while still proclaiming the name of the Most High, the Most High don't love you. He says, suffer or allow not a witch to live. If you're in that nonsense, you're going to die. If you don't repent. If you are a robber or a stealer or a thief or a very deceitful person, there's no place in the Most High's kingdom for you. The only way we can prepare ourselves for the kingdom of the Most High is to return to his covenant. His way is written, and all we have to do is learn, accept, repent, and live accordingly, and we can be redeemed. We can be restored. So with that, Mishra Kai, in this season of dedication, please examine yourself. Don't look at what somebody else is doing. Look at what you're doing. Let us start cleaning our houses up. Let us start cleaning our minds up. But I pray and I hope that this word was well edified, well received. And as the authors of the books that was written for us to know about the Maccabees, I hope as they said that this word, the condensed version, of this world with a couple of examples and we have not even yet covered them all i hope it has been profitable to you for you to make your stand and for you to establish your relationship with the most high and with that i now yield the floor to my elders all praise all honor all esteem to the most high thank you for your grace and mercy upon us who are sinners who are sinners who you've given an opportunity to learn your word to find our way back into you and your mercy endure forever hallelujah elders i now open the floor to you all because we're gentlemen we're going to start with the Ima Oak first. Shabbat Shalom. Uh, I am speechless. I, every year when we read this, you know, when, when we read about Eleazar and what he went through, how honorable and how brave he was. And then the mothers who circumcised their babies, knowing the consequences. If we don't observe this Torah and if we don't keep these commandments, whatever, all this history and all this that we read would have been in vain. I mean, this was just, it's such a told reading, such a told study. I enjoy it every year. And, and you did a you did a, an awesome job at a finding, as always. Hold on. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Toda, toda for your words, Iman. Toda. Shabbat shalom, shabbat shalom. A tobe, 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 tobe blessing. Mm -hmm. And uh, you need your chicken for tomorrow, your extra chicken. I just thank and praise y'all because, it, um, like you all was saying, and I'm still saying, regardless what others do, 
we got to do right. Toke, toke. Hallelujah. As he must say, regardless of what others do, we have to do right. Pray be to the most high. Shabbat shalom, Ms. Rakad. This was truly a tobe tobe lesson and a record of our history of how important it is for us to keep Torah. Even though this, this recording is not Torah, it is the hearts and dedication of, the, of our ancestors, those who are living righteously, determined to keep the Torah in the form that it was presented in this, in this uh, recording, it, what they endured in order to keep Torah. They, I, I understand why they didn't want us to know of these books and how many other books that are out there that reveals our dedication and our love for Yah and his laws and his commandments and the, <laughs> and the temple that he had erected for us to come fellowship in. So this this was a told recording and um, praise Yah for it being revealed and how it was presented to Toda, Toda Yah, how you? Toda, Toda for your words, uh, Iman. Toda for your words. All praise, all esteem to the Most High. Toda, Toda, Yah. Zakin, Zakin. Shalom, shalom. Um, am I being heard? Yes, sir. Ah. Uh, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm enjoying the heat. <clears throat> I love the fire. It's warm. It's inviting. It's a touched stone as uh, a man that I know, a very wealthy man that I know, who uh, taught 30-some uh, years ago in a seminar. There are touchstones or points in our lives that we can use as reference. And though this isn't Torah, it's definitely instructions for us. Because as surely all of us that live and are on this line, if we continue to live, what awaits us as the reckoning draws near and the world becomes acutely aware of whose we are and who we are. These messages are going to be like touchstones and I'm eternally grateful that you're yielding to the set apart Ruach to bring it with heat and fervor because tough shoes are needed for a tough trip. And were we to have open-toed flip-flops by way of a message, um, I dare say most of us would get jacked up uh, on a very long, tough trip. So I, I'm, a, I'm really, really appreciative of how the set apart Ruach is uh, using you and you're yielding to him to deliver this word the way it's needed for this day and time. There's a lot more that I could say, but uh, for the sake of time, I'll yield here. Hold on. Hallelujah, all praise, all honor, all esteem to the most high. Toda for your words, I came. Toda for your words, all praise, all esteem. So I can't, Yaqua, do you have any words? Hello, yeah, hello, yeah. Uh, Wow, powerful, powerful uh, delivery um, and, and very powerful message, uh, Moray. Hello, yeah. Hello, yeah. You know, um, <clears throat> I, I like the way you went into um, uh, uh, Matthew first, you know, um, and, and we all know it. 
mechanically, I think. I think the majority of, of us know um, to keep the commandments and do the commandments mechanically, you know? But but coming into the Maccabees, coming into the Maccabees kind of puts it into a uh, emotional um, understanding of 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 keeping the commandments and and you know a, a man that that he that that teaches men to break uh, the least of them, you know. Um, it, it I can understand why, like you said, why why these books. Uh, by by the the um, Protestants, the Protestant Church, and Protestant just means they're protesting against the, the Catholic. That that's really what Protestant is 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 those that protested the the doctrines uh, of Catholicism. Um, and and I can see why it would be beneficial um, for them to take these this history um, out of the most um, popular book in the world, you know, that's been on the bestsellers list since it's been out, <laughs> you know, which is also a blessing. Hello. Yeah. Um, Cause it, 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 this right here would inspire the most highest people. Not only will it inspire the most highest people, but it really starts to identify. Um, I don't want to even say start it. It, it kind of solidifies who the most highest people are. I, I put in the chat, um, about uh, our history on this side of the earth um, in slavery, you know, and 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 if we read that some of the history, especially from our ancestors uh, that left record of what they went through through that chattel slavery, um, we can see the connections. And and if if we can see the connections um, through that, and then through what the Maccabees went through. Um, you know, you. It would be hard uh, to hold a powerful people down. <laughs> you know, but this is the most highs. This is the most highs. Like they said, it, I. You know, I encourage you to read this not uh, to hurt you, but really uh, to to understand that this is the most highs chastening of his people, um, which really strengthens his people, which really uh, brings them back, snaps them back to um a, a state of reality you know um we see it in this if, if we can just make all the connections it, it wouldn't be that hard um but but they've done a great job like like psalms 83 said they've done a great job to wipe um the name uh yisrael from from anybody's remembrance um but if we can start to make those connections uh i think it would be which i i believe is going to happen um, eventually, um, I think that's the most highest promise. Um, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll get off of that. And, and the other thing, um, you touched on it slightly and, and, and like you said, we'll probably have to have a, a, a lesson on it, but I'm glad you went into what is the word of the most high, what is the word of the most high, because it's important because it says the most highest word lives forever and, and, and the most highest words will not return to him void. So there's if if he said this is your commandments throughout all your generations this is what keeps you connected to me um, um, this is your power this is your wisdom in front of all of the nations then it's not going to come back to him void so nobody nobody and in, 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 well nobody not Paul not James not John not uh, Pastor uh, whoever in in the churches today. None of them can change what the Most High said. If if we if they if we understood that, <laughs> you know, if we understood that, and our, our our ancestors, the Maccabees, understood that, you know, and we're talking about leading up to the the dedication of the temple, the dedication of the temple, the rededication of the temple. Um, we can see that dedication through through the history of uh, um, recorded through these Maccabees. Powerful, powerful message, um, and 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 like you said, um, if we need to meditate on this and and really um, try and and chew all the nutrients, get all the nutrients out of it. I yield. Hello, yah. Told me old lesson. Hallelujah, hallelujah. All praise, all honor, esteem to the Most High. Thank you for your words, uh, Elder. Thank you for your words. 
um, and Mishpachai, before I close, uh, I want to make this statement. So, again, uh, you know, I know a lot of people don't keep it, but again, Hanukkah is about rededication to the Most High, um, fighting for his laws, his righteousness, um, and it reestablish his Sabbath and righteousness. Um, and the, the reason why it came into existence again was because they put a command out for us to not circumcise our children. They wanted us to make sure our children remain uncircumcised. They wanted our hearts to be uncircumcised. They want us to forget our heritage. So uh, we, as we read tonight, um, it says that, you know, the most high, the reason why he punished us, some of this was his mercy and the punishment so that we wouldn't get to the height of our sin, right? So I made the statement that if there was not a Hanukkah, and the reason why I'm observing it, because I'm thankful for our righteous forefathers who actually um, recorded these things, actually fought for the righteousness so that we even still have a relationship with the most high and we're not all totally wiped out. And, and, if, and if we weren't all wiped out because those that sold out and was already living in sin, um, I'm, I'm going to show something here uh, just for a moment. Elders, please don't stone me. Let us all be mature in thought. There are some words that are not actually uh, friendly, but I want to give a visual of if we would have for, for life from this time back, when it came up under just the law is done away with and what they what they wanted to accomplish, what it more than likely looked like during Noah's time and the reason why they still want us to listen to certain type of music, have certain type of behaviors, but they don't want us to serve the most high because the word of the most high makes us royalty. It returns us to our prince like state to become the sons and daughters of the most high and righteous being. So I'm going to share something. So just please, uh, I'm, I'm not going to give a fullness of this because it's kind of graphic, but I want to show the laws is done away with mindset, what it breeds, what it breeds and the fall of our people. And could you imagine how worse it would be if none of us would have ever had the opportunity to uh, observe his Torah. So this is modern times, Mr. Makai. It's disturbing, but y'all just bear with me. Um, can y'all see that image right there? Okay. I'm just gonna give a quick play and I'm gonna stop it. And that's about all we need of that. I'm not going to go to the rest of the graphics of that because y'all see it enough. This, these are parents training little children. Like I told y'all last week, I think I may mention on, on some study, they're training them to be little thugs, little gangsters, little drug dealers. Can you imagine law done away with and none of us knowing the most high where we would be? Can you imagine if we had to grow up where everyone just came up lawless without the Torah and you don't have at least the few of us that's still trying to do as the Maccabees did last during during their time we're still trying to stand for righteousness letting there be some hope for those who want to come to the most high and I didn't even give you a full version of it I just gave you just a little glimpse because you can see the little boys like four or five years old with glocks and drug money on the table with the mothers and the fathers that's a kid's birthday party now, can you imagine if the Most High would not have had Judah and his brothers to fight for our lives and our laws? Can you just imagine how far we will be if we would even be in it to existence? That is the goal behind the laws done away with. That is the goal behind the music industry. That is the reason why they try to silence the Kanye West and things like that, because he was telling the truth. Those people want our people promoting wickedness in our songs. We cannot put righteousness in our songs. They want us to push that life of sin to the generation as young as they can be. So if they're not going to make you a sodomite, they're going to make you a gangster, a drug dealer. Either way, as long as you're not a son or daughter of the Most High, they have us right where they want us. So I just wanted to share that. That is the reason why the law is done away with. Doctrine is very dangerous. And the reason why I keep Hanukkah is because that is the reason why some of us are not living like that which we've seen. And I feel sad for those children they have to grow up under such parents that don't even know who the creator is and they're training their children up in the way they should go. Then when they get old, they more than likely will not depart from it and they will probably die at a young age in some type of gang or drug dealer activity or locked up in prison somewhere. So I just kind of want to show that is the reason why and for our Yaladim and our children, 
the reason why we are really pushing the, these commandments. The Most High want us to be set apart, not set apart for that wickedness, but set apart for righteousness. And so with that, I give all praise, all honor, all esteem to the Most High. May his name be esteemed. I pray and hope everyone um, got uh, uh, some, something out of the lesson tonight. Um, and to, to, to my brothers and sisters, I love you all. Those that are part of this Knesset directly and to those that tune in with us online, we love you all. I hope it's been well edified and well received. And with that, I'm going to turn the floor over to Saul Yohanan uh, for closing Tefla. All right, hold minds and clear. Blessed be the name of Yah Elohim, our King, our Almighty, our salvation. I just want to say to Yah for another Shabbat Eve class, Abba, that we are able to, your children are able to enter to another Shabbat, Abba, that you got us through this week, Abba, that you watch and guard and protect us through this week, Abba, that we are able to make another mark and see another Shabbat, Abba. Hallelujah. Abba, I pray for your children from the four corners of earth. Wherever you have scattered your children, Abba, the ones that do not know who you are, Abba, to wake up, Abba, and turn from their wicked ways, Abba, and seek you and call out to you, Abba, so you can hear, hear our land, Abba. Abba, I pray that you continue to have your watchmen, your Malachines, Abba. The ones that you assign over us, Abba, to watch over us, Abba. To continue keeping your hedge protection over us. To put a dome around us, Abba to block out any distraction, any wickedness, anything that's tried to harm, do harm to us, Abba. I pray for your protective shield, Abba. Protect our children, Abba. Protect our young men and our young women, Abba. Because there's the one, Abba, that's out there running lawless wow due to not of the parents training up what they need to be trained up to abba i pray abba that the parents abba turn from their wicked ways abba and start training our children, though, training our young men and young women, Abba, to walk in the character of you, our Elohim. Abba, I pray that you never depart from us, Abba. I pray, Abba, that you never give up on us, Abba. I pray, Abba, that you never give us a chance to choose life, Abba. Abba, I pray that you continue giving us a chance to repent, Abba. Abba, I continue and I'm going to continue and I'm going to continue praying, Abba, that you don't take your hedge of protection away from us, Abba. Watch over us, protect us, keep us, Abba. Provide for us, Abba. Be with us, Abba. I pray, Abba, that your children will come righteous like one of our ancestors, Abba. Enoch, Abba. And it said, Enoch walked with you, Abba. I pray that we become so righteous, Abba, we be able to walk with you, Abba, yeah.
that you write our names in the book, Abba, and say, we was righteous, Abba. We did your will, Abba. We walked in your character, Abba. We live by your name, Abba. I pray one day that will happen, even if I'm not here to see it, Abba. Told her, Yah, for all your anointed ones, all your savers, Abba. From Noah to all the way to Yahusha. Hallelujah. Let us learn, Abba, from our righteous forefathers and let us learn from the weakness of our forefathers, Abba. So we can continue not making the same mistakes as they did, Abba. I pray for that, Abba. I pray for you to destroy our wickedness, Abba. To purge it away from off this earth, Abba, your creation, Abba. Because everything on this earth is your creation, Abba. You created us. You created the waters. You created the animals. The land, everything, the sky, the stars, the clouds, you created everything, Abba. Told her, yeah, Abba. For the things that you provide for us, Abba. That we're here to still continue to build and grow in the faith of you, Abba. I pray for my elders. I pray for the Nashim. I pray for the Hakim. I pray for your children, Abba. We love you, Abba. We serve you, Abba. We honor you, Almighty Yah. And we always want to esteem your set apart name. Blessed be you, Yah Elohim. Blessed be the name, Yah Elohim. And blessed who all come in the name, Yah Elohim. Hallelujah. 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 Shalom. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, brothers and sisters, enjoy the rest of your night. May the most I watch over, bless and protect you. May he shine his countenance upon you and give you shalom. I'm going to say uh, peace and blessing be upon each and every one of you. Look forward to service in the morning, Mr. Prakash. Shalom, shalom. Keep bringing the heat, John boy. Shalom. Shalom, shalom, Zakane. <laughs> shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. 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 shalom.